Dear colleagues, uh, my name is Evangelia Harmandari and I am a professor of pediatric and adolescent endocrinology at the University of Athens Medical School. Today's presentation is on congenital adrenal hyperplasia and more specifically on the recent advances in medical therapy. Classic CAH due to 21 hydroxylase deficiency is characterized by decreased secretion of glucocorticoids and often mineralocorticoids, adrenal hyperadronzanism, and impaired adrenomedullary function. Current treatment of classic CAH aims to provide adequate glucocorticoid and when necessary mineralocorticoid substitution to prevent adrenal crisis and to suppress the excessive secretion of CRH and ACTH, thereby reducing circulating concentrations of adrenal androgens and steroid precursors. However, achieving and maintaining adrenal androgen suppression is far more challenging than preventing adrenal crisis, and in a significant number of patients, it has proven impossible to control hyperandrogenism without employing supraphysiologic doses of glucocorticoid. The inability to replicate physiologic cortisol concentrations with the administration of hydrocortisone, which is the preferred glucocorticoid during childhood and adolescence, is primarily due to the pharmacokinetic properties of this medication. More specifically, hydrocortisone tablets have almost complete bioavailability, which leads to supraphysiologic cortisol concentrations within one to two hours after administration, but very short half-life, so cortisol concentrations decline monoexponentially and become undetectable four to six hours later. This is more evident in females, given that they have significantly shorter half-life of cortisol than males. Novel medical therapies that have been explored for the treatment of classic CAH include hydrocortisone formulations with pharmacokinetic parameters that mimic more closely physiologic cortisol secretion, such as the delayed and extended release hydrocortisone formulations, the dual release hydrocortisone formulations, and the continuous subcutaneous hydrocortisone infusion. A modified release hydrocortisone capsule formulation called Chronocort was developed using a scalable, multi-layered, multi-particulate technology. Essentially, hydrocortisone was coated onto an inert microcrystalline core, which was further covered with a sustained release layer and an enteric coat layer. When given as a twice daily regimen at a dose of 20 mg at night and 10 mg in the morning, Chronocort provided cortisol exposure similar to that seen in physiologic cortisol concentrations in healthy volunteers. Several studies have now demonstrated that the use of delayed and extended release hydrocortisone formulations provide physiologic cortisol replacement in patients with CAH which is expected to offer improved biochemical control and quality of life and to decrease the risk for comorbidities owing to under treatment or over treatment with glucocorticoids in these patients. Chronocort received marketing approval in 2021 in the UK and Europe for patients with CAH who are older than 12 years. The long-term safety extension phase of Chronocode is ongoing and additional studies are planned in the US. Another modified release formulation of hydrocortisone licensed in Europe, which has an immediate release coating together with an extended release core, is Plenadrin. This formulation can be taken once daily in the morning. Compared with the classic immediate release hydrocortisone tablets, 
The one daily formulation profile increases cortisol exposure in the morning, reduces exposure in the afternoon and evening, and reduces the overall 24-hour cortisol exposure by approximately 20%. In addition, while on the dual release formulation, patients demonstrate significantly lower weight and systolic and diastolic blood pressure compared with the thrice-daily immediate-release hydrocortisone formulation. They also demonstrate improved cardiovascular risk factors, glucose metabolism, and quality of life in comparison with the conventional treatment. Plenadrin received um, approval by the EMA in 2011 for the treatment of adrenal insufficiency. However, the overnight cortisol-free interval cannot address uh, the ACTH increased androgen secretion that occurs in CAH and sufficient data in patients with CAH are still lacking. In addition to using modified release hydrocortisone formulations, efforts have been made to simulate physiologic cortisol secretion by using continuous subcutaneous hydrocortisone infusion. Administration of hydrocortisone via continuous subcutaneous infusion results in decreased ACTH and higher cortisol concentrations in the morning, a more physiologic 24-hour salivary cortisol and cortisone profile, and a lower activity of the hepatic enzymes uh, participating in cortisol metabolism. Furthermore, it proved safe and therefore may become a treatment option for selected patients with CAH that function poorly on conventional therapies. However, it is an attractive method for glucocorticoid delivery, but labor-intensive with practical concerns such as equipment failure, discomfort, local skill irritation and infections, which limit its use. In conclusion, the greatest challenge in the treatment of classic CAH is balancing glucocorticoid and mineral corticoid doses to effectively address both adrenal insufficiency and androgen excess. The increased adrenal androgen secretion in patients with the most severe forms of the disease often necessitates supraphysiologic glucocorticoid therapy in order to adequately suppress the excess ACTH and androgen secretion. The use of delayed and extended release hydrocortisone formulations provide physiologic cortisol repla replacement and are expected to offer an improved outcome in patients with a classic form of the disease. Thank you very much.